Happy Friday, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another exciting SLG meetup. Today, it's gonna be with the international best-selling author of The Social Agent, Tony Giordano. Really good friend, and he's a real estate expert. He has been seen on CNBC, in Million Dollar Listing, on Bravo TV, and he's gonna be here to talk about the latest trends in the real estate market in California, as well as all the new tools that we are experiencing to take this industry to the next level. From cryptocurrency to NFTs, it's gonna be a conversation full of interesting topics. So thank you all for being here and let's get him on board. All right. Oh, here he is, Tony the man, what's happening? I'm doing good. How are you? Good, good, good. I see you calmer eh, from the last time I saw you. <laughs> you what? I see you a little bit calm eh, compared to the last time I saw yeah. you in LA. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was exactly. a good time. Good to see you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, as always. And uh, uh, I, I already miss you being in LA. You got you to gotta get up back on a plane and head back. Uh, by the way, we'll have a call after this about Tulum, so I'll tell you later. Okay, But cool. <laughs> No, I mean, I was making a quick intro about yourself. I mean, you are the real estate guru, expert. You're based in California, in Los Angeles, and you've been seen on CNBC, Million Dollar Listing in Bravo TV, and you also are an international best-selling author with your book, The Social Agent, which, by the way, I'm loving it so far. So, oh, very awesome. cool book. And... You're here today to talk about your story, and I find it so fascinating how you came all the way from starting in such a competitive industry to become one of the agents to look into, you know, for inspiration. So tell us a little bit about you and your story. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to give you the, the, the quick version of the story as fast as I can. Um, but for the most part, you know, got into the business uh, pretty young, um, I was 20 years old and I was selling cell phones for AT&T and I walked into a mortgage company to sell them cell phones mm -hmm. and the branch manager offered me a job and little did I know I'd, I'd be good at it. And, uh, so I went from selling phones to selling loans and also <laughs> was, you know, going after the fire department, got picked up with the fire department as well. So on my days at the station, I was just networking. And then my days off from the fire department, I was back in the office doing the firefighters loans, my fellow, my fellow uh, brothers and sisters. And it just took off, you know, uh, after September 11th, which was the birth of the fake housing market, the birth of the fake economy. Um, mm -hmm. And if you look at history and you look at the historic lines, you will see September 11th was the birth of that entire fake economy and fake housing market that came crashing down in 08, 09. So the, the, the whole, you know, going from make, being semi-successful to extremely successful because anybody could buy a house during 02, 03, 04, 05, 06. It was impossible not to make over a million dollars a year in my 20s. And you know, by 2008 or 2007, I pretty much had everything one would want. I had a bunch of properties. I had nice cars. I had fine art. I had fine watches. I enjoyed fine things. Uh, married two kids and, you know, boats, Hummers, you know, you name it. I had it, which was just stupid at the end of the day. <laughs> but back then I was young and dumb and with, and then at, by that time, I owned my own mortgage offices and I was part owner with three other partners. And we were one of the top ranked mortgage companies in all of California and had offices in Southern California. And I lose everything in less than 18 months in the 2008, 2009 crash. Went through a massive divorce, youngest son's diagnosed with autism, I go from an 812 FICO score to 496, which I didn't even know you could have a 496 FICO score. So I went to the extreme other way. Uh, 19 foreclosures on my credit, uh, all my cars, boats, repossessed, 
I had to sell fine art and fine watches for 10 cents on the dollar because nobody was buying that crap. And it really just, you know, I was over leveraged on everything. And I didn't come from wealth. I didn't come from business savvy parents. I didn't, you know, dad was a landscaper, mom's a bookkeeper. Uh, so it was a big learning experience. And finally, after 08, 09, you know, it was about summer of 09, I just got so fed up with lending. And, you know, you couldn't get a jumbo loan for a client in 09. Everything was mm -hmm. crashing still. So I decided to switch to the sales side of the business. And I had my real estate license already. So I just walked into one of the real estate offices in Beverly Hills and, and the Malibu sister office. And I handed them my real estate license. And I said, I'm a realtor now. You know, how hard can it be? <laughs> that was, was an unfortunate <laughs> reality check. I, I didn't yeah. know how much agents actually do. Uh, so, you know, the once I became an agent, you know, now I, I had a very successful mortgage career and I, I did a lot of like pro athletes uh, home loans and celebrities home loans. I mean, I did big loans. So I learned the luxury aspect in in developing clientele that were higher end and, and wealthier, which, you know, are, are amazing clientele to have if you can get into that, that pocket. But I didn't come from that. So I had to learn it. And there was one guy, uh, he's still very good friends. Uh, he took me under his wing. And this was during the mortgage run. It's not after the crash. This is way before like 02, 03, 04. And I got into his circle and it was funny because I was doing loans that were, you know, 500,000, 600,000, $700,000 loans. Somebody was buying a million dollar house, you know, so it was somewhat high end, but not $5 million loans on $10 million houses yeah, yeah. or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to get this guy's business. He was referred to me. Um, and let me know if, are you uh, uh, seeing my wife? Your Wi-Fi is so, kind of freezing, so I didn't know if it was me or you, but yours is kind of... No, circling. I was listening to you. I saw, you, I sure I saw your me. screen also. No, I hear you. I hear you yeah. properly. So, okay, perfect. So, uh, you know, so he kind of, I get a chance to sit with this guy. And there's a reason I'm sharing this story because it's all about, you know, luxury right and it's and it's getting into that world or getting into that line of business and clientele to then take you to the next level so we're sitting there at lunch and i'm telling him i can do this and i can do that just arrogant 23 year old thinking he's like the bomb and like there's nobody better than me and he goes well i'm looking to you know leverage out some of my houses here in beverly hills you know so i'm looking $10 million dollar loan, a $5 million dollar loan, and a $2 million dollar loan. And I go, what do you want to do a $10 million dollar loan on? On my $20 million dollar house. And I was like, oh my goodness, I'm in way over my head. I've never done a loan bigger than $700,000. And this guy wants me to do a loan. Oh my gosh. So of course, I'm like, yeah, I can do that, and blah, 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 and just use car salesman yeah, approach. Of and like, no, nah, don't worry, I got you, I got you. And finally, yeah, he goes, well, I love your confidence. He goes, so I'm going to give you a shot at this. And I said, awesome. And these are going to be the biggest loans I've ever done and the largest client I've ever done. And before he orders a bottle of champagne at lunch, he says, but before I give you a shot, can I ask you an honest question? And he's got this very deep Russian accent. He's like 6'6", six, six, looks like he's right out of the Russian mob. And uh, he goes, can I ask you a, an honest question? I said, sure. And he goes, will you give me an honest answer? And I was like, depends on the question, right? <laughs> so yeah. uh, I said, yes, I'll give you an honest answer. And he goes, you've never done loans this large and have ever dealt with a client like me before, have you? And I said, no. He goes, yeah, that's, that's what I thought. I said, is that a problem?
And I said, yeah, you're taking No, I, I love your confidence. He goes, but I just wanted to see how you answered that question. I'm still going to give you a shot because I like you. And I said, awesome. And he, and I said, so, and he orders the bottle of champagne at Rosé Dom Perignon, which, you know, at the time, I don't even know what Rosé Dom Perignon is. I know what Dom <laughs> Perignon is, but it's like, like that's mm -hmm. what my grandpa drinks. So when he orders Rosé Dom, I'm looking at the bottle, I'm like, not even Cristal. Like, you know, in my head, because I, I yeah. only know Cristal, because, you know, Puff Daddy loves Cristal in 2002 and three. So he, uh, he orders it, little do I know, it's three times the cost of Cristal. And the, um, so, uh, so as I'm sitting there, I said, so what, what did it, what, what, what gave it away? Like, what did I say wrong? And he goes, you didn't say anything wrong. He goes, that's why I'm giving you a shot. And I said, then what, what, how did you know that I've never dealt with high end clients like this before? And he goes, because there's no way you'd be wearing that watch. Oh, wow. And I go, I like my watch. He goes, I like your watch too. He goes, but there's no way you would be dealing with high end clients of my level. And he's not being arrogant. He's trying to teach me something. And he goes, there's no way you'd be dealing with clients like me consistently every month and still be wet watch. And I go, well, hmm. what if I don't like nice watches? What if I'm not into watches? He goes, then you, you wouldn't have wore a watch today. He goes, so I just know that you don't deal with clients at my level. And I go, okay, fair enough. So what, am I supposed to go buy a Rolex? And he, <laughs> goes, he goes, let me tell you something about the different levels of wealth. He goes, lower end wealth, you know, somebody who can say they're a millionaire, he goes, is loud. He goes, the first thing they want to do is go buy a Rolex because even an eight-year-old knows what a Rolex is. And I said, but Rolexes are really nice. He goes, yes. He goes, I have a Rolex, but it's like their $100,000 Rolex. And I go, okay. He goes, so no, I'm not telling you to go buy a Rolex. I'm just telling you, you got to look at things like this. And I said, well, what kind of watch are you wearing? That was not a right, that was not the right question to ask. So he <laughs> takes off this massive watch, this huge face on it. He takes off this watch and he hands it to me. And it literally weighs like the same as a brick. I mean, it is so heavy. <laughs> so I, I know it's real. And I look at it. This is 2003. And I look at it and I go, Richard Mill. And he grabs the watch out of my hand and he goes, Richard Millet. He goes, also another reason I know you've never dealt with clients that are very high end because you don't even know how to pronounce the brand of the watch. And I go, okay. He goes, so I'm going to, I'm going to teach you something. And I go, what's that? He goes, I'm going to teach you something called the glance. And I go, the glance, he goes, the glance, he goes, you're going to notice from this point on in your life, you're going to notice every time you're talking to somebody who's successful or, or somewhat wealthy or, or whatever, at one point, as you're talking to them, you're going to see them go like this. He goes, and what they're going to do is they're going to look at your wrist and they're going to look at your shoes. If you're a lady, they're going to look at your wrist. They're going to look at your neck. They're going to look at your purse. He goes, but you're going to see a glance when you go to pay for lunch because you're trying to impress someone who's successful. You're going to see them glance at the card you drop down. He goes, and it's not that people are trying to make fun. He goes, wealthy people, they put things together all the time and they're constantly BSed by people. He goes, so when somebody's approaching to them, when somebody's talking to them about business, they're looking to see if you're full of crap. He goes, so they glance and they look. He goes, and you'll notice this. And I go, you're out of your mind. I've never noticed anyone ever do that ever. He goes, just watch. And sure, as, sure enough, that day, I'm checking into a restaurant they don't have any seats available. 
And when I come up, I go, I'm just trying to see if there's any way we could get a table today. I see the hostess and the manager just both go and look at my watch. <laughs> like it was, it was crazy. I was like, holy, I can't believe I paid for dinner that night. And somebody who was at the dinner looked at the card that I was dropping. Like, and I, I go, oh my goodness. So he was trying to teach me things like, do you think a wealthy person is going to believe that you're the best mortgage person out there and you're this successful person? He goes, if you drop down a Mickey Mouse Target Visa <laughs> card to pay for lunch with <laughs> or a debit card, he goes, no, because it's not that they're making fun of you. Once again, he goes, it's because now it doesn't make sense. There's no mm -hmm. way this person can be a wealthy business owner and pays with business lunches with a business debit card. He goes, that means he doesn't have an Amex. He doesn't have a financial accountant. He doesn't know how to actually run a business. And it was very interesting when he said that. Totally. So now, long story short, he taught me so much more beyond that about the, the world of luxury. He taught me how to read the Rob Report. He wanted me to learn the, the names and brands of yachts, fashion, he would send me YouTube links. Like he goes, you know, this is how the correct way to pronounce this. This is the correct way to pronounce that. And everything he taught me led to getting super high end clients. And we're still friends to this day. And now when I'm on stage teaching my presentation called sophisticated impression, he's been in the audience and he says, you're now teaching me. He goes, I didn't even know that. He goes, so I really took it to the next level. Well, then I lose everything. Because the one thing I didn't do was save money. I was too busy trying to keep up with the Joneses. And, you know, it was just so idiotic, the, the crap that I would buy. I owned properties all over the country that I didn't even rent out. Like, it was just, I just owned them. Like, there was no smart business decision making because I didn't come from that. So now fast forward, I become an agent. And the one thing that I did was I, I knew that a website was going to be extremely important. And I knew that social media was going to be important. And this is October of 09. So I started taking a completely different approach on social media that still 99% of real estate agents or business owners don't even know how to do correctly. There's a very small fraction of people who actually understand the true approach. So I, started doing this different approach and connecting and engaging people and building relationships and increasing my audience, drawing traffic back to my website. Website looked gorgeous, even though I'd never sold a luxury house. My first 30 days as an agent, it looked like Tony was a hundred million dollar producer online. <laughs> like this guy is a baller because perception is what? Reality. Reality, 100%. So I looked equal to the big agents. And I didn't lie. Mm -hmm. It didn't say sold. It didn't say represented. It didn't say it was my listing. You just went on my website and maybe saw a slideshow of gorgeous multi-million dollar homes that I purchased the legal right to use from shutterstock.com. And you assume that they're houses I sold. I didn't say I sold them. That's just a slideshow of gorgeous houses for 50 bucks each. <laughs> Perception is reality. Well, mm -hmm. that led to getting literally in my first 60 days as an agent, I got my five, a $5 million listing in Manhattan Beach here in LA from a woman that I had added as a friend on Facebook just three weeks before that. But, you know, we don't have enough time to get into that, but there's techniques. There's, there's these things I do to get in with the right people, not just be adding random people. And, and they can find it and, right in your book. Exactly. It's in that one. It's in the first one. It's going to be in the, the 3.0 that I'm writing right now. That and in the audio book, done. right, that you're going to come with? Yeah, I'll have the new 3.0 out soon. So there we go. The, so by the end of 2010, my rookie year, I was rookie of the year nationally for the company I was with. I'm not going to name brand companies today because you know I've moved around so there's no reason to do that but uh but the company I was with was not an easy company to be rookie of the year they they're a huge brand and I was rookie of the year then that led to them saying how are you doing this would you mind speaking at our annual conference 
Then I started speaking. Then before I know it, other, cramp, uh, other companies were asking me to speak. Now I'm on stage once a week, selling real estate in LA, writing the first book, The Social Agent. Book becomes a bestseller in 2012. Then the rest is history. I started just exploding and building businesses. And then that led to answer your last question. Uh, even though I sell real estate in Los Angeles as an agent, I also own an advertising firm that does different things. It's, I call it a global real estate servicing company because it's services that aren't considered brokerage or selling. So it's not a team. It's not a brokerage. It's an it's a advertising firm, marketing firm, and that's called the Opulent Agency. That is not me as an agent. I'm just Tony Giordano as an agent. But Opulent Agency does crypto management for crypto purchasing or, or crypto trading where people are trading their Bitcoin for a real estate asset or they're taking a loan out on their Bitcoin to buy real estate. Uh, it's athlete relocation because I still had all those athletes. So I always look for partner agents across the United mm -hmm. States so I can send them athletes that need to relocate or are being traded. And then the biggest thing that it does is it's an advertising firm for luxury real estate. So let's say, and you already know this, but for the people listening, uh, you're an agent with any brand and you just got this gorgeous $10 million listing and you know how to do some marketing, but you want mass marketing and you want viral video marketing and you want, you want everything to just go crazy. We actually, you bring us on to co-market. We're not on your listing, we're just, co-marketing and drawing all the traffic back to you and then we just get a piece when it sells but we're shooting the video we're getting the video tens and tens of thousands of views on youtube google instagram we're running all the global campaigns facebook marketing instagram marketing and that just allows you to have that much more exposure um, we're running print ads rob reports it's amazing and, and mm -hmm. we we do all the costs we're fronting all that money on your your listing. So there's just different things. And of course, yes, I coach luxury, I coach technology, I coach sales, prospecting, time management, and write books. You do it there's all, man. Story. And then you have fun as well. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to be like Tony? <laughs> I well, love it. Hey, and, and I don't want to come across like that because people who know me know that that's just not who I am. What I do want to say is the reason I think I do so many different things is first, I have an amazing staff that allows me to do so many different things. I couldn't do it alone. Second, I, when people ask me, which is often, what motivates you? Like what just fuels you every day? I say people. The more people that I'm in front of, the more people that I know I'm helping, even if it's one person out of that 20,000 strong audience that I'm on stage, even if one person turns their life around or is able to implement a strategy or is motivated, it just fuels me to do it again. So yes, I might do things, but it's because I just, I don't want to say no to anybody. So when they say, Tony, you think you can help me co-market? Sure. And then before I know it, I own a marketing agency. Tony, you, you think go. you can coach me? Sure. I just don't say no. Tony, you think you should write a book? Sure. So hopefully uh -huh. somebody doesn't ask me something I don't want to do because I'm probably going to go, sure. <laughs> sure, let's do it. <laughs> Amazing. So I'll I think about some questions to ask. <laughs> no, but that's phenomenal. Honestly, your whole trajectory is very inspiring. And I know that you've been giving some amazing golden nuggets today and for those that want to hear more and, and read more, here is the amazing book of Tony, The Social Agent. Now, I know we don't have too much time, but definitely it's always a pleasure to hear you speak. Where can people find more about you? Is your Instagram the best way to go? I would say Instagram, like this is my personal Instagram, Tony underscore Giordano, that uh, you guys can follow um, for just knowing more about me uh you also in my headline will see my other you know companies and the other things that i do so opulent is there my real estate is there my coaching company is there then you can easily find those websites so uh you know giordano.global is tony the speaker the author the opulent is the advertising firm 
uh, risemastery.com is the coaching uh, uh, company, but just start with Instagram, follow, you know, uh, you might see different things that I do and they might give you good ideas to do for yourself. Um, but I just, again, love people. I love taking the time to answer people's questions. It might take me a while, but if you send me a question, it will be answered eventually. Don't, don't worry about that. It's just, I get, I get inundated with a lot of, a lot of uh, questions a lot of the time. Yeah, and, and Tony, I mean, I was in LA with you. We had a great time. You also drove me around to see some nice properties. So for those that are listening, please make sure to follow him because he's full of knowledge, full of value. And besides that, you're a great guy. I mean, it's really a pleasure hanging as, out with you as and you your are. wife, London. Oh, thank you. Yes, so, as you are. Look, you, we, love, I, I absolutely, uh, you know, love our friendship. And, and it's been, it hasn't been a long friendship, but it's, it feels like it has. Like, it feels like we've known each other for years after, you know, <laughs> just for the last year. So. And more to come, more to come. So. Thank you so much. I really enjoy the conversation. We'll definitely have to do another one because there's so many things to go about that you can share with the audience. But for now, please, guys, make sure to follow Tony, all his different businesses. Where can they get this book? Amazon? Amazon. Yeah, it just Amazon's probably the easiest. It's on Prime, so it'll be delivered within the same day sometimes because it has the Prime uh, tag on it. Uh, look for the next book. The next book is not a, it doesn't mean that the, the 2.0 isn't, isn't work anymore. It's just a new book that will give even that much Updated. more information. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely pick up the 2.0 book because it's still very, still very relevant. And by the way, I'll be in Miami the first week of August. Uh, almost, I think the first week or the second week of August at a, I'm speaking uh, there now that things are back open. And if you go to my journal, and you see Seeking Tour, where nothing is in there right now. Everything is actually getting loaded this week because now all the events are, are getting booked again. So there's like 20 upcoming events that we haven't put in the calendar mm -hmm. yet, just to let everybody know. There are, just look back next week and you'll see everything there. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Tony. It's been a pleasure having you here today. Wishing you a beautiful weekend and see you soon. See you soon. Thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in.